sustainability fund. And as you can see, we all from eco solutions environmental consulting system. I am also the project manager for the Green School Certification Program, which we are launching for the MENA region today. The purpose of our meeting will be to introduce you as representatives of schools from the different countries of the MENA region to the opportunities that you have in order to transform your schools into certified green schools and to implement uh, true sustainability strategies and to become part of the rising green schools community uh, in the region. I would like to thank you for on board the uh, school representatives, directors, uh, teachers, coordinators from uh, different countries such as Lebanon, uh, the UAE, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Egypt, Jordan, Oman, Kuwait, Bahrain, Iraq. Uh, I hope I didn't miss any country, so welcome everyone. So this is the agenda for today. We're going to start first with a presentation by Mr. Gilbert Tegu, who's the CEO of EECO Solutions Environmental Consultancy Firm. He's going to be introducing the Green School Certification Program, the certification process, um, the benefits that it has to your institution. And then next, we're going to move to a presentation by Mr. Omid Sagiri. Mr. Omid is the Green Building Specialist at IFC. He's going to be addressing Edge for Green Schools, which is an international certification that your schools can also pursue. And at the end of the session, we're going to have the uh, questions and answers where you will be able to uh, 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 ask directly all your questions. But you can feel free to start writing them down as you move forward with our slides and with our presentations. And you can address them all uh, at the end. Uh, you can share them or address them to everyone so that we can see them in one full list uh, um, at the end. And I'm going to be moderating this session. And just a few more information about this webinar. As I mentioned, this webinar is being recorded. We're going to be sending you the recording and all the materials uh, of this uh, webinar uh, later on. Uh, you can use the chat feature to ask questions, as I mentioned. And uh, our fellows from the uh, IFT and from EDGE will be sharing the survey at the end of the session. So we'd appreciate if you can please fill it out. And uh, we apologize for the uh, remark at the bottom of the screen, but some people usually connect uh, without connecting their audio. So uh, this is just a remark for them. And please excuse any, uh, any potential difficulties in uh, the webinar. We are all implemented with remotely. And uh, we hope everything will be okay for everyone. So before we start our presentations, I'm going to give the word to Mr. Omid Sabiri who will be introducing IFC, and then he will pass the ball to Mr. Gilbert Tego to start the presentation. Mr. Ahmed? Sure, thank you so much. And uh, thank you everyone for joining. I just wanted to welcome everyone on behalf of IFC uh, as well. And thank you for joining to this session and webinar. From IFC side, we, have, we are very excited. We have been you know, working on green buildings and climate change agenda for years now, and we wanted to make sure that you know that message comes across that this is important for IFC and World Bank Group to ensure that we can improve the efficiency as well as um, quality of education using a, a process where the students can be ambassadors for climate change mitigation. Um, and I will be later speaking about how we are doing it on on edge. Uh, but I stop here and pass the ball to uh, my colleague Gilbert. Gilbert, go ahead. You're now the presenter. Let me, I'm going to unmute you. Uh, hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. I'm going to start with my Green Schools certification uh, presentation. Uh, one thing uh, worth mentioning is that uh, the Green Schools is a certification program as a school, uh, and it, its aim is really to put every student in the region in a green school within this generation. We believe that uh, as we move along uh, 
uh, with climate change, with all the issues and all the solutions that we are looking at now and in the near future, uh, students have the right to be in a green school. Uh, one of the things that is important to mention is that the green school uh, certification uh, encompasses many standards uh, that you may be familiar with in the green building sector, uh, particularly uh, the LEED, BREEAM. Uh, it started basically with the LEED and BREEAM for schools, and then we integrated many of the regional uh, uh, certifications that have uh, notoriety in, uh, in the area, in the MENA area. And uh, last but not least, now we're talking about EDGE, uh, and we have integrated also EDGE within uh, some parameters of the Green School so that you can have a complementary and bigger certification as you go along. Uh, the program is definitely uh, now a MENA uh, program, and uh, we aim to transform the public and the private schools uh, in the MENA region to become certified Green Schools in a very interactive approach, uh, whereby uh, you will receive as a school, uh, you will have a dedicated team from uh, eEco Solutions uh, who are sustainability experts and certified auditors to help you all along uh, this, uh, this path forward, which, is, which doesn't end really in certification, but continues with time because, as you know, um, parameters and measures of sustainability evolve with time. Uh, and uh, what we, I was just mentioning before, uh, the schools now can achieve a dual certification. So you can have both a green school, uh, green school certification uh, plus an EDGE certification, which is an innovation of IFC, a member of the World Bank Group. Uh, the way we go forward is that you will be able as a school to, be, to assess, uh, improve and announce your level of school sustainability. And this is done through uh, different, uh, to, uh, let me say, a three-dimensional approach. Uh, what, I say, what I mean by three-dimensional is that we look first at the building measures and how green is the school building, okay, or the facility or the premises. Uh, and in there, there are lots of uh, standards and, uh, that relate to many, to many factors, um, factors, which we will talk about soon. Uh, on top of this, uh, we look at the administration practices in terms of procurement, uh, in terms of uh, uh, introducing uh, activities, uh, things in the curriculum for students to improve their engagement, in terms of uh, you know, maintenance, uh, in, in, in many, many aspects you will see how the administration practices have to become eco-friendly. And definitely uh, all this to reflect on the students in terms of activities, curriculum. Uh, what we want, frankly, is uh, the students to come out after, let's say, their 12 years in a school uh, to be uh, eco-citizens and to be very well convinced that climate change is uh, within solutions, let's say, for climate change are within their hands. It's not just something beyond them. Uh, they will be the people who can impact uh, the positive, uh, uh, you know, improvements of uh, of what we are seeing as deterioration in the environment today, and definitely to reduce their carbon footprint. Now, uh, when we talk about the certification of the green schools, we talk about green points, and the green points are distributed over six categories. Each category has a weight, uh, which means a number of points of green points in it. Uh, you would notice that the energy efficiency has the most, uh, which is 25 green points. And then we have the water, uh, the sustainability education and innovation. Then we have the water efficiency and then the waste and health and safety. So uh, one thing is worth mentioning is that there is no mandatory point. So you don't have any elim eliminatory points uh, to, uh, to the whole certification. So you can gather your points uh, through any of the categories. But what is most important is that you reach as a school 20 points as a minimum to be certified as bronze. And as you move forward in the number of points, you could reach silver, gold, platinum, or titanium. So the total number of green points are 100 points to score. And depending where you reach, you could, you could reach the level of certification. 
this is done through a program uh, where we start first with an online registration. So you register your school online, uh, and then we do the first online assessment session, which is followed by a report where we give you the potential points for your school. It's, uh, it's a good session. It's a long session that we do online uh, with you uh, as representative of the school. And you could be one or many person from your team uh, attending this session, depending on who will be involved in the, in the certification from your side. And uh, then you have a time that we define together for implementation of the measures. Uh, after that, we will come for a technical audit. So this is a physical audit where our auditors will come to the school and uh, check all the parameters that have been discussed to validate them and then issue the certification. So uh, usually, in, uh, in from the experience we have, uh, we've seen that there are three uh, main categories of, uh, let's say, people who get involved from your side from the school. It's the principal and either and or the teacher, some teacher, probably most of you are now teachers or uh, attending today. And sometimes, and uh, most recently, we've been seeing also coordinators of the student or social or environmental clubs from, from the schools. Uh, we, call, we call you all the green champions of the school because you will be carrying this, this uh, project within the school and be able to liaise with all the departments that are uh, concerned. Uh, to give you an idea what the school gets when uh, you reach certification, this is an example of a certificate which I'm going to explain quickly. You see the level of certification first, which is, for example, in this one, the Green Schools Platinum, and then the name of the school. There is a, a date stamp uh, on, the, on the certificate. Uh, that this is important because the Green School certification is valid for two years. So we encourage all the school every two years to revisit their the certification. Uh, certainly, as uh, we move uh, along with the improvements on, on the versions of uh, certifications. And in the bottom strip, you can see each category, uh, the maximum green points. For example, if I take this one, uh, let's say the energy efficiency is on 17, and uh, 12 of them are, uh, the school, this school has reached 12, uh, 12 points. Uh, you may see here that it's 17 because this is a certificate uh, for the previous version. Uh, now we are talking about 25 points. So, uh, and uh, on the right hand side, you can see a donut which shows uh, the level achieved, which is bronze, silver, gold, uh, platinum, and uh, the total number of points. For example, this school has reached 50 points, so it's eligible to be called platinum. And uh, what, whatever is below 20 points, we call them uh, schools that are, you know, on their way to become green schools. So, uh, we also try to encourage them, not through a certificate, they will not receive a certificate, but they will uh, receive a letter that they are on their way to become a green school. So certification starts from bronze. Uh, also, uh, what is important to note is that uh, when you become a green school, uh, you, you have definitely a better positioning among your peers. Uh, sometimes uh, some governments that we have seen in the region are very active in uh, promoting sustainability, so you will be in line with your governmental visions. Uh, we see many visions of like 2030, 2040, 2050 in many, in many countries now. Uh, you will have a clear sustainability roadmap, so it will be very clear that every action you could do in the future in the school can be mapped into this certification. And the most important thing is that you'll be working on having students to become eco-citizen, eco-citizens. And what we mean by this, and you will see in the certification, is that uh, we encourage all the schools to implement lots of activities at every level. I mean, KG, uh, primary, secondary, uh, higher level, uh, so, that, so that the student, uh, you know, gets into the eco-citizenship at all levels of 
of uh, their path within the, the 12 years at, at school, not only once, uh, you know, and, and that's it. Because we want this to change their behavior and for them to be able to change the behavior of their parents at home and large. Okay, and last but not least, you will also be in line with the international standards whereby uh, you as a school can start going into worldwide competitions, worldwide forums on green schools at, at ease because you have covered all the parameters that are international. Uh, one thing is also worth mentioning is by participating to the green school certification program, you are contributing indirectly or directly, definitely, to, the, to eight of the 17 SDGs. So this is quite a, a good portion of SDGs that you will be tackling. Uh, and we know that SDGs now are integrated within uh, many strategies, uh, either through the education or the ministries of education, or even through the governments. Uh, on top of this, uh, you get a logo that you can use in your, uh, depending on your level, for example, if you reach silver in, in this case, you will uh, get, be getting a logo to use in your communication, in your emails, in your email signatures, anywhere you want. A flag that we will uh, send you, uh, which you can use to raise uh, for your school during the international uh, environmental days or other activities that you do. Uh, you could also order a glass uh, plaque, uh, which is uh, 50 by 50 centimeters that you could pl place on the front of the school. And uh, of course, you will be uh, promoted on social media and listed on the Green Schools uh, website. Uh, more than this, you will definitely be a part of the community and invited to events and ceremonies, particularly the annual ceremony of, uh, of where we give out the certificates. Uh, this picture you can see here, for example, was in the Ministry of Education. Uh, and we had the students. Uh, uh, all the schools, you know, getting their certificates. You can uh, also participate in green clubs competitions or any competition we, we do. The last one being reducing the single-use plastics at the schools. And uh, some are the field trips that we did for green jobs. For example, this trip was done in France where students visited the factory of Renault for electric cars. They saw how electric cars are being produced. They visited biodegradable packaging factories and, and other things. So all this is inspiring for students to go into the environment and to find their future in it. Uh, we say uh, that we have moved now to MENA uh, out of our success in uh, Lebanon as a test market where e-eco solutions was appointed uh, by the Center for Green Schools, which is part of the US GBC, as the Lebanon chapter uh, for the Global Coalition for uh, Green Schools. And uh, in Lebanon, uh, the program was launched in 2015, and it uh, engaged uh, about 170 schools since then. Uh, 60 of them have been uh, have reached their certification in all the countries, and they are a mix of public and private schools. And the program has received the support of the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of Environment, and uh, multiple awards, among which uh, the local uh, Global Compact Network for the SDGs and the UNDP Sustainability Champion Prize. Um, in general, we have, uh, as an example, in Lebanon, uh, five platinum schools, five gold schools, 10 silver, and 36 so far. And if you follow this link, you can see all the schools that have participated. Now, uh, we come to the point that everybody is going to ask about, this is beautiful, uh, well, how much is it going to cost us? This is a slide we're going to talk a little bit about the fees. Uh, what is very important to, to show first is that we are talking of two levels of certification. As the Green Schools uh, Certification Program, uh, we have fees. And the EDGE certification has additional fees. Uh, the common thing between both is that once you engage with the Green School certification, uh, you will receive uh, the EDGE auditing fees as free of charge. 
So uh, because our team as eEco Solutions, we have accredited edge auditors, and this is the advantage that we will offer you as, as a school within the program, which is generally in a range of $3,500 to $4,000 uh, per auditor. So this is something that you will be saving on the edge audit. Uh, edge audit. Uh, the official fees for the green schools, we, we, sep we uh, segment the schools in number of students, so uh, we look at schools of uh, 500 and less students, of 1,500 and more, and the in between as 500 to 1,500. The fees are usually 2,500, 5,000, and 7,500 USD. Uh, but for this year, as a special support also, for when we know the situation of all the schools today in the world, uh, we have uh, accommodated and we are pleased to offer a 60% discount uh, for the academic year 2020-2021. So the fees will be $1,000, $2,000, and $3,000. Uh, how do you register? Uh, you go to greenschools.me and uh, you just uh, fill up the, the form and we will take it uh, onward from there. And uh, it, I would like to mention also that the websites are in English, Arabic, and French. Uh, French, I think, is going to come very soon. It's maybe not as of now. Uh, by this, I would like to finish my presentation. And uh, definitely, we will have a question and answer session after the Omid's presentation. But before I go, I would like to show you a video of uh, small short advertisements that were done by students of green schools uh, in Lebanon and they were you know posted on TV in cinemas and on social media some time ago. So let me share that with you. Now, how do we share the shared? Okay, I just want to make sure that you hear the sound. Okay, call me whatever. Okay, here we go. I'm sorry for this because I'm not so used to this. I will start and if you don't hear uh, any video, please let me know. I'm a 
ندفع فاتير الكهرباء صرنا نولي الكهرباء من وين؟ ولو واضحه مثل الشمس هيدا جيل المدارس الخضراء جيل مسؤول عن بيئته سجل مدرستك اليوم Okay, that's it for me. I'm gonna pass on now to Omid. Thank you so much. So, so inspiring. All right, so let me make sure that you can see my screen well. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, so, you know, this is very close to my heart because one of the first projects that I started in my career was to to work with the schools and uh, to to you know improve the efficiency of the schools. And the belief there is that the students are and children are the best ambassadors. And if uh, they believe in something. The chances of them convincing their parents and also com convincing the community to be green um, and the future would be green. On the EDGE program, so what we have been doing on EDGE program is that we have introduced a specific module on EDGE for um, education. But uh, before getting there, I want to just quickly run you through what EDGE is for the benefit of and those of you that are not aware of the EDGE program, um, very, very quickly I'll go through this. Uh, so IFC is part of the World Bank Group and we are uh, the private sector arm of the, private, uh, the World Bank Group. What that does it mean? It means that we work with the private sector and we believe that private sector are the agents of change and they, they are the ones that they can bring development uh, globally. Obviously, there are other parts of World Bank Group that works with governments and, and other, other parts of the entities. Um, so within the IFC, we have a program uh, called Green Building Market Transformation Program. Um, under the Green Building Market Transformation Program, we have um, four segments. Number one is that we do investments directly in projects, for example, in, in schools, hotels, office buildings in emerging markets. We also work with the banks to develop green financing products, different types of green financing products. Um, we also work with governments to in improve the incentives and codes for green projects, green buildings. And finally, we work on green certification called EDGE. Those are the four um, elements of, of our work within IFC on green buildings. Within the work on uh, within the work on the uh, different segments, what we are doing, we our work is focused on uh, three elements. Number one is that IFC is one of the largest uh, investment banks globally that does investments, and we want to make sure that our investments has a development impact and has a positive impact in the in the society. The second one is advice. We support uh, projects with advice with different tools. And the final element is around market creation. And we believe that these activities needs to lead toward market, market creation in different markets. What is the definition of green building from our point of view? Um, so the green building definition has three elements. Number one is that it needs to be certified and verified by independent third party is very important for us to have a third party verification um, because when then you want to link this um, green building to other elements like incentives or other programs it's very important that it's been third, third party verified second one is that there's at least 20 percent efficiency from the baseline on energy um, so performance of uh, you know, efficiency is very important in our definition. The reason why we want to make sure that that translates to um, impact that can be you know saving money basically for schools and making sure that they they will save on their, their utility costs. And finally, um, making sure that there is a reporting program uh, and that 
is uh, quite important because students can contribute to look at before and after facts and measure that impact and see how exactly the savings are, are translating to reality. EDGE is uh, aligned with a lot of international uh, green finance standards. Um, you know, it's very important that you know that EDGE has been designed with, with the uh, green financing in mind uh, to ensure that there is rigor uh, review and testing to make sure that the financial institutions and international organizations trust in uh, what we are delivering on EDGE. Um, so, working together uh, for better schools, uh, I think the program on Green School Certification Program and EDGE has a lot in common uh, in terms of, you know, savings on energy and water and materials. But then there is element of um, making sure that green schools, uh, EDGE tries to make the schools as an efficient asset and verify the asset that as international recognition um, backed by IFC and World Bank. And then Green Schools takes it a step forward and brings it to you know, how the students, how the teachers, how the principal can uh, take part in, the, in operational activities as well. So engaging, making sure that the asset is, is efficient and then engaging with the wider sustainability elements on the Green Schools is, is very important. So how EDGE works, EDGE has three elements. Number one, EDGE provides a free software that can be used to verify what is the as-is condition on existing, uh, of, is existing school, or if you are designing a new school, and what is the uh, design condition of a school and how efficient that school is. Then the 20% efficiency is uh, the achievable standard. We create a baseline for each country and that then from there you can measure 20% efficiency. And finally, there is a third party verification and certification that comes with EDGE. And the software is uh, free to use and we encourage, you know, even maybe students can start working with this. We are already starting to we introduce this uh, software and application to university students, but uh, you know, the kids these days are becoming smarter and smarter. So you know, it's, it's important for them maybe to have some testing with these kind of uh, you know application with their own school. Uh, but then this is a base for you know showing the baseline of um, each each country and each school, and then how how much savings is achieved by implementing different measures. If we find time, I will quickly show you a quick demo. Uh, in terms of uh, types of buildings that can get certified with EDGE, there is um, the uh, new buildings, obviously, and existing buildings and refurbishments, right? So to me, also, refurbishment is very important for schools because there is a lot of existing buildings. Um, and during COVID specifically, uh, it's a good opportunity uh, for the schools to make improvements as needed. Uh, the name of the software, I'll show you the link to the software at the end, so you can see where to, where to link and, and see the application. Uh, so existing building and, and refurbishments is, is very important. And under that, then we have uh, under education, preschool, school, university, sport facilities, and religious facilities. So these are the different uh, facilities that we can put you know, under a school um, and then verify them using EDGE. The other piece is portfolio. So for the school owners um, that they have multiple schools or ministries that they, you know, government ministries that they manage multiple schools they can get certified with portfolio and portfolio certification reduces the cost of certification. And the, with the work that we are doing with Eco Solutions, um, obviously you would have also benefit of a lower cost for the audits. So then, then that becomes quite affordable. These are some examples of um, school facilities that are 
certified uh, by edge um, that it is important to mention that you know it can be uh, any type of school from a very you know, specifically designed so this this school this is a, a school of arts in colombia and it's been designed with very high level of passive design measures um it's, it's uh, quite a unique passive passively designed with a lot of uh, daylight with uh, very good natural ventilation um very good uh, you know it's, it's basically runs most of the time without any heating or cooling system because of the uh, passive design measures in it and um, these are other examples this is in indonesia school again certified by edge another um, project in colombia it's a fac faculty of engineering and another school in Vietnam, it's a Montessori International School that's being certified by EDGE. So then you can see that there are different types of projects that um, are already certified. We publish these um, case studies for each of these schools in our website, and I'll show you where the case studies are. to Make sure that those um, schools are spoken about and they are they have been recognized. Uh, the, Edge program looks at three elements, energy, water, and materials. These are the three. And I, I need to mention that the material section for existing schools becomes almost, um, you know, if the school is more than five years old, old um, five years after construction, then the material section becomes reuse of existing materials. If it is a new school, then we will verify this, uh, the materials embodied energy. On water, it looks at all the water efficiency elements, um, everything from you know, lower uh, flow rate facets and shower heads and, uh, and toilets, all the way to uh, water recycling systems. Um, and then finally, on energy, it looks at you know, all the passive architectural measures, as well as active measures, mechanical, electrical, and renewable energy. Edge has three levels of certification. The baseline, uh, the base certification is Edge certified when a project gets to 20% certification, 20% efficiency on water, energy, and materials. And Edge advanced is when the energy gets to 40% efficiency. And for the projects that to get to edge advance, then they can also apply for zero carbon certification. Zero carbon certification is uh, for designed for edge advanced certification. And the way that uh, zero carbon works, it works on actual builds of the projects and showing that either those builds are all covered by renewable energy or those builds are offset. Any carbon on the school is offset by um, by the carbon offset mechanisms that are approved by World Bank and UN. So these three levels are very exciting for the schools to uh, to be. I know that some of the countries like UAE has targets for zero carbon, and this is a very um, easy tool for the for the schools and uh, buildings to, to certify the, the projects using this mechanism. And this is uh, one of the projects that been certified as zero carbon. It's an office building in Manila in Philippines. It's a very modern office building. Uh, was first certified. We have other uh, projects certified or in the pipeline for zero carbon certification as well. The edge certificate is very transparent. It's, in that sense, it's very unique. It has the, all the savings uh, displayed. It has all the you know, certification and documents, as well as uh, all the measures that employed to meet those savings. And it can be displayed in the school, um, even you know, shown to the students so that the students, they can see how the, their school is performing. EDGE has um, three levels. So as I explained, we have three um, levels of certification, but then the certification can happen during the design after construction and in operation. Uh, so uh, if you are going through a new project for a school, you can design, certify the school, come back uh, after construction and certify the construction. And then you can also do zero carbon certification. If you are doing 
an existing building, then you can directly certify a post construction. And if you are interested, you can do zero carbon. The, the design certificate is only valid for three years. The construction certification or post construction certification is valid for the life of the building. So once you certify it, then that certificate will stay with the, with the school. The zero carbon is valid depending on the type of the offset, either for two years or four years, and then it needs to be renewed after two to four years. Uh, so we, uh, these are the fees um, for certification. As Gilbert mentioned, the uh, audit fee will be covered um, with the ECHO solutions um, as a, if you are applying for a joint certification, and the, these are the certification fees uh, for the EDGE program. In terms of the retrofits, I just want to mention the retro, retrofit opportunities as well. Uh, the way that EDGE can support the projects is to provide um, different packages of set uh, the retrofit, and then these retrofits uh, can lead to certification. Um, obviously, from a school's point of view, it's important to uh, calculate what's the cost of uh, implementing these measures. We have projects that and they use this program to come up with the cost of retrofits, then they put it in the budget and approve that budget, or they apply for financing or different solutions. They implement these uh, solutions and then they certify, right? So that's, that's one of the processes. But these retrofit packages mainly is, is very important for the portfolio clients as well. If you have portfolio of the schools, we can use EDGE to verify you know, what would be the most efficient retrofit package for your project and then start uh, applying them to, to your projects. So this is examples of uh, you know, light to medium retrofits, uh, like you know, if the building does not have insulation, roof insulation, or um, a level of solar hot water, or even in hot climates, you can use the hot water with absorption chillers to cool the Cool the school, um, variable speed fans, um, the external shading or low flow facets. And these are quite a low cost elements that one can install. And then it go, you can go also to deep retrofits. Uh, if the school is very old and you want to do retrofits, then it's very important to then take more uh, deeper approach of what we can do to increase the efficiency of the school, even up to 60%. Um, with different measures that EDGE can provide within the system. We are also working on a different program called um, Building Resilience Index, and resilience is um, also important for us to improve. What can we do to improve the resilience of the, the structures towards uh, different disasters? And this is also important that this can be added in future for uh, improving the resilience of the, the school structures. Uh, this is a separate program to EDGE, but it, it's a program that uh, is a sister to EDGE in, in a sense. Our program uh, on EDGE is supported by uh, many donors, including UK government, um, the Swiss government, and, and other governments globally. Um, I'm gonna very you know, like take two minutes and show the uh, edge, edge software, and then come back and uh, show the you know then open the floor for question, uh, questions and answers. So the edge website is called edgebuildings.com. You can access it's it's an open website and it shows the types of buildings here, including educational buildings and also how many how many square meters being certified and what is the impact of certified projects to date. Um, the case studies that I showed you, uh, they are all here. You can go here and check the educational buildings. Uh, and for each case study, then we would have um, detailed explanations. For example, this is a university in Mexico that received Edge Advance. Um, th these projects, uh, as you see, this, there is a lot of um, you know, 
greenery and as well it's, it's an eco um, building that being designed by the by the university and then finally the edge app um, is app.edgebuildings.com and if here you click on the edge app it uh, brings up the edge app and edge app uh, is also open access to everyone that uh, you can you can use all right um thank you so much i'll, I'll stop here and then uh, pass the ball i open the floor for questions and answers Thank you, Ahmed, for, for this very interesting presentation. So I'm going to start with some questions that were already asked. Um, there's two questions from Hula Dandan to you, Gilbert, uh, about the Green School Certification Program. She's asking, is there a specific requirement for a school to join? And is there a representative to come and check the school uh, regarding the point? I guess you answered the second part during the presentation, but you might want to might want to further explain. Okay. Uh, are you hearing me now? Yes. Okay. Uh, the, the requirement for a school to join the certification is very simple. You just have to be a school that is registered as a, within the Ministry of Education of your country. So it has just to be a school that is registered. Beyond that, uh, you could be private or public. It doesn't matter. Uh, what was the second question? The second question was uh, whether there will be a representative that will come and audit the school. Uh, yes, of course, uh, there will be a representative that will come and audit the, uh, the school. And now with uh, COVID-19, uh, we are doing a remote audit uh, through, uh, you know, uh, either someone representing the school or somebody as an assessor that is certified by us in the country. So uh, this can, the, we can also do a remote audit uh, during COVID-19. And this is something that we have. I think this is some of the benefits of uh, COVID-19, as we say, that uh, we have become more remote. Okay, one more question from Mandy. Saying with COVID, there is a difficulty with doing all activities. How does this affect points? Uh, this is still a challenge. Uh, of course, activities are reduced now uh, with COVID-19, and uh, they will just not be scored in uh, in the in the school, and uh, unfortunately, they will be missed. So, uh, but we hope that COVID-19, uh, I think, we're at the end of it. Uh, so uh, things will go back to a new normal in the future. Thank you. And a question regarding the certification fee. Uh, Hiba is asking, is this amount paid one time? And for updating the certificate, is that an extra fee? Uh, the fee is paid, yes, in one time. Uh, and uh, for the updating of the certificate within the two years, uh, there is no extra fee. For example, let's say in year one, you have reached your certification of, uh, let's say, uh, silver. And in the year after you made some improvement and uh, you reached higher levels. So we can do the review for you uh, within the two years without any additional fees. But every two years, there will be new fees to be implemented. So when you pass the two years and you want to renew, there will be new fees. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, I have a question for Omed. Um, what is it that makes green buildings more important and needed in times of crisis? And do you think that with COVID-19, uh, any flag is raised for uh, additional need for more sustainable buildings nowadays, especially in schools? Yes, I, I, yeah, there is um, quite an important element that COVID-19 uh, revealed to us. Right? Number one is that it showed us that there is challenges in our way of life. And when there is challenges, then we need to get together and find solution to solve it. And one of the challenges that we are facing um, now during COVID-19 is jobs, right? We are, a lot of countries are losing jobs and they are struggling from economy. Uh, from the 
in in our uh, plan within IFC, we have a green recovery plan, and part of the green recovery plan is to say how can making the economy greener can create jobs that to recover from COVID as well. Right? The the challenge now that I'm I'm seeing, hearing feedback. I don't know uh, if you can mute if you are not speaking. I don't know where the feedback is coming from. So if there is ways for us to uh, create jobs using green recovery that would be the best solution because um we can create uh, uh, create um, jobs through green retrofits in the schools that will create jobs at the end of the the retrofit we would have more efficient facilities the other thing that covid taught us is that you know ventilation natural ventilation is very important for the health of of people um, and i know that you know one of the points has been uh, moving toward more and more air conditioned schools and now with the covid we need to uh, really look at how we are ventilating the spaces right whether we are ventilating you know how much fresh air we are putting the, to the system whether we are adding enough um, openings for windows in case uh, that the outside weather is good. For example, in many Middle East countries, you have uh, three or four months or five months of good weather, which the windows can be open. So these are um, the lessons that learned from, from COVID on, the, on how to deal with the, with the retrofit and why it's important for us to do this even uh, more important than what we had before COVID. Thank you. Thank you very much, Omid. Uh, I would like to ask the attendees if they have any additional questions that they would like to raise before we uh, close this session. And I would like to remind them as well to fill out the survey uh, of Edge when they finish. And I'm going to write down also the website of the Green Post Certification Program in case you wanted to get more information about it. Uh, okay, I think no more questions. Uh, do you, would you like, uh, do any of the presenters uh, wish to make any final note before we close? There's one quick question that came to me. This is Ruth Mir, I served as the host, uh, about what does the virtual audit consist of? Okay, uh, would you like uh, Gilbert or Omid to, to address uh, this question? Because virtual audit, I think, is used in both ads and the Green School Certification Program. I can go first and then um, Gilbert, we can add uh, if I'm missing anything. So at the start of COVID, what we had um, issue with was because in EDGE we had um, the auditor personally going to the building and inspecting buildings, right? And that was part of the, the um, post-construction audit. Given the COVID uh, condition, we uh, set up a protocol for remote audit, but the remote audit will exactly define how the process of auditor works um, with a, a remote condition. What it means, it means that, for example, somebody that is understanding the building and construction situation in the in the school needs to uh, do exactly what auditor would do and all do, do the all the measurements do all the inspections with the auditor online so then the auditor will guide the uh, inspector in the building to walk around and do the measurements after installations and then uh, report that to the auditor um, and this needs to be documented very well, and that's all been, um, you know, the protocol describes how the documentation and processes work in detail to ensure that there is uh, quality of uh, quality control managed uh, well in, in that process. Okay, Gilbert, would you like to add anything? Uh, well, uh, it's uh, fairly what uh, Omid just said. Uh, in the green schools, particularly, there are a few measures uh, that can be just audited by sending us. 
uh, proofs of some material. Uh, there are things that are done through uh, seeing the activities on the uh, social media uh, pages of the school. There are things that are within uh, memos of the school. Uh, but for anything that is physically required, it goes at the same process as EDGE. Uh, so the auditor will ask uh, someone in the school to go and verify uh, certain things. For example, uh, verifying the number of uh, LED lights within the school. We will go uh, video this and see what they are, which type and all that stuff. So it's fairly similar to what EDGE does. And certainly that uh, in, due, in due course, depending if the school is going for birth certifications, then the audit will be uh, primarily as the edge uh, audit, uh, remote audit uh, uh, criteria, parameters and, uh, and protocol. Is that clear uh, to everyone? Yeah. Okay. So I guess this is all the questions. I would like to thank all of you for joining us today. We hope you got all the information you're interested in and that you have a good interest in starting and uh, or growing your sustainable engagement. We hope that you will be very soon receiving your registration to begin your certification process. Uh, our team will be always available to help you with any questions or required guidance. I would like to wish you a nice evening ahead and hope we will talk again soon. Bye-bye.